Hello and welcome back to my channel Disney Jewels Mac 1965. This is the third vlog of a set of three um, where I talk about um, being on board uh, the Disney Dream um, and the Disney Magic, um, I'll cover both, and um, about getting off at the port is the focus of this special video today. That sometimes can be quite difficult um, partly because if you run in a wheelchair um, you need to be able to um, get off on a slope that is reasonable and unfortunately in some ports the slope um, the um, it is just too vertiginous it is too steep and you really do have a problem. Um, Disney do help you get on and off the ship. Um, I have to say, Belfast, when I show you that, um, was very steep to get on and off. Um, but I had a crew member at the front of me and a crew member and my husband behind me and they weren't like, going to let me go anywhere, but I got to learn to trust. Um, I, my heart was in my mouth and there was two slopes to go down. Um, and that was from deck three. I like slopes from deck one, far easier to be able to get off. The other thing is that if you go to a port um, that has a tender, which is the boat that takes you ashore, you've got to be able to get out of your chair, transfer into that tender, have your chair put down, and then do the same getting off the other end. Um, and that isn't possible for me, um, but it might be possible for you if you're in a wheelchair and you've got more dexterity in your upper half of your body. Um, and you're able to do those transfers. Um, so, you know, don't, please don't take, um, fully as gospel what I'm saying. Think about you and your chair and what you are able to do, what, what your body allows you to be able to do. And that's very important. Um, <clears throat> you need to um, also think about time ashore. Um, time ashore, you obviously need a little bit longer if you are a wheelchair user and um, sadly on this cruise, this last cruise, we had um, a couple of days cut short, but that was because of tides. It was nothing Disney had done, it was because of the tides. So just be aware of that as well. So you don't miss your time to come back. The only thing I would say critical of Disney is that the cost of their shore excursions for somebody in a wheelchair is ridiculous. I cannot tell you how expensive it was. I asked for a quote to be able to go to get a taxi, an accessible taxi from the ship to get me to the Belfast, Belfast Titanic Museum and to get us back from there. The quote came back for $1,500 and that was for four hours of a chartered private taxi. Wouldn't want that at all. The taxis that we used were brilliant in Belfast. Um, we used Paul's accessible taxis. If you Google it, it will come up. He was superb. And for four hours of him, wouldn't have cost me $1,500. It would have probably cost me about $200. So for $50, maybe not even that actually, the $50 got Paul, came to the port, he picked us up, he strapped my wheelchair in the back um, of his, um, his transport, which was perfectly adapted. He was very, very detailed, very careful to make sure that I was safe. And he did it all, Mick didn't have to help at all. And it was wonderful and that was for $50 to go to, from the port to the, 
the Belfast Museum and return and I couldn't fault it. So do your homework, really do your homework because when we went to Denmark last year um, again we only had about three or four hours there and I wanted to go to Tivoli Gardens and go and go and see the original park that inspired Walt all those years ago and it, it wasn't going to happen because again I was struggling to find an accessible taxi um, although you could find them I asked Disney and again their quote seems to be standard $1,500 for four hours at a theme park and that doesn't include entry tickets crazy so just be very aware and it, and it helps to sit down do some homework about those venues that you're going to and um, just plan it and, and I enjoy doing that I know not everybody does but again, reach out to wheelchair users that have been to Disneyland. Um, I know I'm a Disneyland Paris um, inside here, but with just Disney Cruise Line, I'm very experienced with that now. So reach out and I'm quite happy for you to contact me and ask those individual questions if it helps to give you a bit of confidence. Um, of, and if I've been on that cruise or I've been at that port, then I'll be able to help you. I haven't done any of the Caribbean ones, so don't ask me about that. I can't answer those. Um, but um, any cruises that go from the UK um, to um, your, your, your cruises, um, I'll be able to help out. So do ask, um, because it gives you that bit of confidence. I know as a wheelchair user, and those of you out there that use wheelchairs, you will know that if you have confidence in where you're going, you enjoy it. If you don't have confidence and you get there and you're whittling and you're worried, you don't enjoy it. And you, you just don't, just don't try. Um, and it is difficult because it is hard to get that information that you need. But ask, ring, ask, pester, email, email again, email again when it doesn't get answered and just keep doing that and you will get those answers. And when you've done it, share it because that's important as well. I always hit YouTube and look for people's videos of, of um, where they've been in Europe, if that's where we're going with the cruise. Have a look at the general area then try and dial, delve a bit deeper and see if somebody in a wheelchair has been and what their advice is. And it's just really useful um, to do that. The same on Instagram, ask those questions, see if somebody put a reel on um, about it. So find those answers so you are that confident wheelchair user when you get the other end. I hope this series of vlogs has been really helpful. I'm going to insert some videos now of some of the ports um, that we've got on and off at um, so you can see um, the problems and uh, ports that we didn't get off on. Um, and um, I hope that helps. Um, I will put some um, voiceover on it uh, on, on the details but I, I hope you find them helpful if you do please let me know continue to sub subscribe and like and I really appreciate you following along um, and joining us here or joining me here on YouTube thank you again hello and this is this was our ventures on the Disney magic to Copenhagen in Denmark um, and we went to see the little mermaid um, now, it was fairly flat along the edge, um, good paths um, to get to the Little Mermaid, but to actually get near her, I didn't have a chance because there was lots of rocks, um, no way I could have climbed down, got out my wheelchair and climbed down or anything. And it was a bit frustrating because people kept climbing up to her, so it was very hard to even get a plain photo, but we did manage it. Um, on the whole 
Um, and you can see there the rocks and how difficult it would have been for me to get up my chair and do that. Lots of cobbles, um, so be very aware of that if you, you do go there. But it, she was beautiful and it was worth it. This was another stop on the, um, the, the Northern Europe cruise and this was to Wattemund um, and this was a little town in Germany. A lot of people got off here to go to Berlin. Um, again, it would be difficult for me to go to Berlin um, because we'd need the accessible transport. Um, we didn't even look into it uh, because we knew how much Disney were going to charge us, which was a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, the town itself was lovely. Um, we went down to the, uh, the beach side, couldn't get on the beach because there was no beach um, wheelchairs, but um, it was straightforward to get down there. You can see pretty straightforward along the paths, no problems, no cobbles. Um, my husband did walk into the little town um, and go to the shops there. I didn't, I went back to the boat because it was quite cobbly. Again, um, beautiful, but lots of cobbles, which are not good, as you know, if you're in a wheelchair. And this was Oslo. You can see um, how cold and overcast it was um, to get in there. Um, Oslo was a bit of a problem. We were able to get off the ship, but it was very difficult to get any further forward, um, again, without some transport, um, because of how it, just how it was organized um, and things. It also was incredibly busy because there was lots of, ours was the second cruise ship in, then two more came in. So there was actually four cruise ships all going through the cruise terminal and then trying to get into the city itself and obviously go on varying trips. So that was difficult. Um, so we actually stayed on the ship on Os the Oslo day. It, was, uh, it made more sense and easier for us. Oslo itself apparently was very beautiful, so it is worth getting up if you can. And I hope that we can re revisit on a cruise at some point. Um, hope it's not so busy and uh, it's big to go off and hope the weather's a bit better because it did rain um, and was able to get off the sh ship and go and actually explore. Right, this is us on the Disney Dream now and this is British Isles cruise and this was Belfast. And you can see here the um, very steep slopes it was to get off. So I had Mick at the back of me and I had a crew member at the front of me going so slowly down those ramps because it was very scary. Um, but was very well supported, I have to say. Uh, Disney were brilliant. When we got to the Titanic quarter and I organised a, a private taxi and used Paul's accessible taxis, we were brilliant. So if ever in Belfast in a wheelchair, use him. Amazing. But the whole um, thing was brilliant um, for wheelchair users, not a problem. Highly recommended. This was Greenock. Um, I could get off at Greenock. Um, it was very easy, straightforward. Here's some of the ramps um, to get off. Um, my husband got off, but I didn't. Um, a lot of people who went to Greenock obviously got off the boat to go to Edinburgh or Glasgow. Um, I've been to both, so I booked a spa day, as you do, um, which was lovely. Um, but it, it was accessible, um, just that the town was on a bit of a slope um, with that. But um, on the whole, Greenock was fine. The next place was Liverpool, and um, we did get off at Liverpool. Um, it wasn't very easy to get off. Again, there was quite um, steep slopes to get off the boat, and then steep slopes to get into Liverpool and back again. So just be aware of that. There were cobbles as well. And this is Cobb, and this is in Southern Ireland. Um, and um, I didn't get off here because the actual town had a lot of steep slopes. The ramp to get off wasn't bad, 
um, but again plan very well if you're going to go somewhere like that thank you for watching do appreciate it and um, look forward to seeing you on my next videos thank you